So, in the beginning, we talked about the mouth and how the mouth really was made up of um, lips that are designed to sort of um, hold food in while you chew. If you didn't have lips, it would sort of just spill out and you'd be super gross. Dating would not be something that you'd want to go on to go out to eat. That would be the grossest thing ever. God forbid kissing them afterwards. Oh. Um, the palate is the roof of the mouth. It's a hard palate and a soft palate. And what they're doing is to help break food down. And also it sort of assesses how big the food is before you swallow it. The tongue does two things. It moves and, chew and turns the food while you're eating it. Um, make sure that it's the proper thickness before you swallow. Of course, it houses a ton of taste buds, and they're designed to take these items in, sort of do a quick um, analysis of it, and if it's something good, tell you to bring it in. If it's something bad, it's going to do a quick analysis and tell you to spit it out and get rid of it. And then, of course, there's the teeth. They're going to do the mechanical breakdown. We have our salivary glands in our mouth, and we have our parotid the salivary glands and you can see that there's a duct it sits by the ear there's a little duct that spills saliva out into the top of the teeth and then we have our submandibular salivary gland and you can see where the ducts fall they go under the tongue and this one seems pretty active sometimes when you get hungry or whatever and it produces a bunch of saliva that sits under your tongue saliva is designed to help um, not just help liquefy food and make it wet so you can propel it down your body but it's also designed to help break food down it's mostly water and it's slightly acidic so it can help facilitate killing of any foreign pathogens there's an enzyme in it called salivary amylase anything that ends with ase is usually an enzyme and this is one that breaks down um breaks down uh starches uh, carbs and another one that happens just in babies just in babies is this um ligunal lipase we produce lipase as adults from our pancreas into our small intestines but babies produce this one and it's done in the mouth and it's designed to break down fat right away so they can help absorb it because they don't have as long of a um, small intestines and large intestines as we do so they get a jump start on it in the mouth and then they can take that fat and absorb it there's going to be mucine which is sort of a component of mucus that helps lubricate and helps for swallowing and of course immune substances like antibodies, lysosomes, and defensins, which is just a chemical that helps break down bacteria. And the function is to clean your mouth, um, help you with your breath, of course, dissolves molecules so they can be tasted. Um, taste has to be liquefied for you to taste it. If not, the things that taste horrible, if they stay solid like a, like a pill, um, then you don't really get to taste it and you can sort of swallow that pill. Uh, moistens foods, enzymes like the amylase and only in babies, the lagunal lipase will start to break down um, food right at the mouth. And then of course, non-specific immunity is going to be done there too. We have different parts of our um, mouth that we do things in. We have the oropharynx, which is going to be in the mouth. That makes sense, right? Oro. And then a laryngopharynx, and that's going to be the deeper part of our esophagus, and that's where we're going to start to slide food down. The esophagus is where we're going to go ahead and propel food from one area to another, your mouth to your stomach. It's definitely controlled by a smooth muscle, and this is going to be an involuntary response to get it down. Um, it um, starts out with the epiglottis. That kind of looks like a little tongue. You'll see it in the cadaver. And it closes off the trachea and makes it so food will go down the esophagus. As soon as you're done swallowing, the epiglottis opens back up and air can go into the trachea of your lungs travels through a little hole in the diaphragm. It's the only hole in the diaphragm, and it's just designed to allow the epiglottis to go into the stomach. 
And there's going to be our first sphincter. I like to call it the cardiac sphincter, but if you want to call it the gastroesophageal sphincter, go for it. Um, either one I'll take on my exam. It is a sphincter that allows food to come in from the esophagus and go into the stomach. And um, it makes it so um, acids and things don't upflow up into the stomach, from the stomach, excuse me, to the um, esophagus. Swallowing is going to definitely happen initially in the mouth. There's a bunch of muscles involved that we're not going to talk about, but the first part is going to be voluntary and sort of you're using your hard palate and your tongue to identify the thickness of food or viscosity of food, and then you're going to swallow that down. That's going to be called a bolus at that point, and then that is going to go ahead and be taken over by your esophagus, and um, that's going to be an involuntary response that point and that's going to be done by these tactile receptors which that's just a funny way of saying that it's a receptor that touches something and is going to go ahead and control the smooth muscle to move food down. The pharynx of the esophageal phase that's involuntary it's going to be controlled by the medulla oblongata and the pons in the brain and that is going to um, make sure that the soft palate is closed it's going to make sure that the trachea is closed off, peristalsis starts, and we'll control all of those sphincters. And then we get to our stomach. Our stomach is, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about the stomach in another video.